Yo, what is good, world? It's your boy, Calvin Leroy King, the third of This, That, and the Third. And as always, I got my lovely co hosts with the most by my side, Miss Reese Peace, the one and only. Hey, y'all. And we thank y'all for tuning in and turning up with us on another exclusive segment starring none other than Mr. Gino Betts. Now, Gino is a dope, dope brother that I had the pleasure of meeting while we were in college, and he has so many things coming up. Uh, right now and going into the future that's going to impact our community and ultimately our world. So without further ado, can we slow clap Mr. Gino Best in real quick one time for the one time. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to turn it over to Reese and she's going to give you a little bit of background information on this good brother. So he is born and raised in Chicago. He graduated from Whitney Young, graduated from NIU, graduated from SIU <laughs> Law. <Okay>. Graduated. <laughs> Started working uh, for the state's attorney here in Cook County, and now is working for the new police oversight agency. That's right. Right, which investigates Chicago police officers and the misconduct. That's Very right. much needed. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> um, and he's running for Cook County Circuit Court Judge in the Fifth Sub Circuit. Mm. I know I said a lot, okay? Yeah, I get <laughs> but it though. But I'm definitely excited to talk to you and, and hear your platform, understand what you plan to do, because I feel like we need more young, vibrant males to kind of take a stand and stand up so we can take the city back. I agree with that 100%, and honestly, that's why I'm running. Um, I practice in a lot of courtrooms across Cook County, and we don't have any representation on the other side of the bench that looks like us, you know, mm -hmm. young black males on the south side of Chicago, mid-30s. Uh, but we have plenty of representation on the opposite side of that bench. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm running. Right. Now, it's interesting because uh, your, your background, like, did you always kind of know that you were on course to go in towards the judge seat? Or was it something that it just kind of came to you? Uh, when I was a kid, I knew I wanted to be a judge. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that you had to be a lawyer first. Right, right, right. <laughs> and honestly, I didn't know any lawyers until I actually went to law school. Okay. So uh, the process of getting to be a judge, it's a long process. Right. Uh, I've practiced in uh, various uh, areas of the law. I've done everything from appellate work to trial work, juvenile court. Um, now I'm doing administrative law. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I have, I've graduated in 2009, but I've gotten a lot of uh, experience since then. Though. And the funny story about that, I'm glad you said that in order to be a judge, you have to be a lawyer. I didn't know because that. I did, because I used to want to be a judge growing up, right? And someone told me, you got to go to law school. And I was like, I just don't want to do all that. I just want to be a judge. I want to make decisions. Right. So it, that's good that you're letting people know that that is the process. That's right. like you're on the path to becoming a judge or whatever uh, lane you want to branch off into. Absolutely. But I think knowing the law, obviously, is the foundation. But what was, the, what was the thing about your childhood that let you, both of you all, know that you wanted to be a judge at such an early, early age? I think for me, uh, honestly, we being honest here, right. uh, I was watching like uh, Uncle Phil on uh, ah, Fresh Prince. That'll do it. That'll do it. That was part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Though, if you think yeah. about it, we didn't have many, we had Dr. Hustable, but right. we didn't have any attorneys. Right. Yeah. Right. right, so that coupled with what I was seeing out in the streets, I grew up on the west side of Chicago. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you know, you're seeing the drugs and the crime, not only on the streets, but also inside my house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plenty of family members who were drug addicted, you know, committing crimes in order to feed that addiction. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to do something where I can be an asset and do something about it. Right. What is the most uh, maybe surprising aspect of the work that you do? Like you might think you got it figured out going into, I'm gonna go to, in the law, I'm gonna become a judge, I'm gonna you know, service my community. What was like the biggest aha moment? Like, man, this is real. Mm -hmm. So when I was a prosecutor, when I first got out of law school, I was a prosecutor for about six years. Uh, I was doing juvenile juvenile cases. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you deal when you deal with juveniles, you're actually trying to do what's in the best interest of the kid. Right. So if you're not focused on you know sending people to jail, you're not focused on uh, convictions or anything like that. But once I left the juvenile court system and I started prosecuting adult cases, and I remember the first time I saw an adult sentence, this guy, it was an attempt murder, and he got 36 years. So for me, that was my aha mm. moment. Like, yeah. these are real numbers that right. these people are getting. Oh, yeah. Like, it's not just... That was older than you yeah, at the time. It's, yeah. it's exactly right. So it wasn't juvenile court anymore. It right. wasn't probation. It wasn't slaps on the wrist. It mm. was real numbers. Right. Yeah. Okay, so now, with you running for judge, what are some of the things that, like, what's your platform? What will you try to change or yeah. do to make things better? So as a judicial candidate, you're not allowed to have a platform per se, but what you can say is that you'll be fair, you know, you got, you're, you're an experienced attorney, that type of thing. But I think a person's 
resume kind of speaks on their behalf, right? right. Mm -hmm. So I look at the things that I have done in the past, you know, whether I'm going to different schools, talking to the kids, whether I'm mentoring youth, whether I'm uh, serving as a prosecutor, my entire career has been built on public service, right? right? So I think that resume, I'm gonna bring, you know, that same disposition, that same, um, that same, uh, those same concerns mm -hmm. to the bench, mm -hmm. whether I'm wearing a black robe or not. Okay. But he'll definitely have more power if he's there wearing a black robe. Just so saying, so vote for Gino Betts. There you uh, go. For real. <laughs> uh, I think my, my thing would be, as a follow-up from the last question, like what was the most inspirational moment where you were like, you know what, the system needs work, but there's hope here. Sure. Um, I think I'll have to go back to juvenile court again, mm -hmm. you know, just seeing people who were basically raised in the system, right. you know, whether they come from the abuse and neglect side, then they go over to the delinquency side, mm -hmm. and then they graduate, and they actually end up going to college, you know, actually uh, end up breaking that cycle. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times we, this, the, the system has a, a grip not only on one person, but a whole generation, yeah. right? So that they can break that cycle, I think that's that all that gives us hope. You know? Right, no, I definitely agree. I agree with that too. Have Ooh. you ever had to, uh, you know, when you were working, maybe in the juvenile space or even in the mentorship space, actually uh, defend or, or provide services for somebody that you knew outside of the courtroom and then had to bring, you know, your skill set to help help them in the courtroom? Or, um, or are you are not allowed to do that? It's like a conflict. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a conflict. Oh, so okay. I've never had that situation. Okay, okay. You know, but obviously I would use my services to uh, help recommend family and them. friends, or even recommend them to somebody right. that can take that case. Yeah, because I just know there's a lot of people out here that need help, and yeah. it's kind of like unfair that it's like, well, because I've helped this person in a personal capacity before, I now can't represent them in a professional capacity. Yeah. You know, so that's unfortunate. Um, but ultimately, I'm speaking into existence and claiming right now, this yeah. will be the next judge hey, like uh, sitting here in our <laughs> Chicago land area, right? You're gonna come back to the show once you do get that for black sure, robe. Sure. But what does success look like for you going forward? Because once you get this appointment, yeah. then is it like you wanna go to Supreme Court? What's you wanna next? like like you yeah, wanna be third good? Right. I wanna see if you wanna be third good. We definitely taking it one step at a time. Yeah. 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 So uh, this is the next step and we need everybody to go out and vote. Yeah. Early vote starts February 8th. Straight you up. can vote at 69 West Washington and then you can vote in your ward starting on March 5th and election day is March 20th. Okay. All right. So even though judges are not allowed to have a platform, what does the campaign look like to be running for or consider for a judge position? What does the campaign and process look like? Yeah. A lot of work. A yeah. whole bunch of work. A lot of uh, phone calls. A lot of asking for donations, a lot of knocking on doors, speaking at churches, things of that nature. Okay. okay. Yeah. And is there any part that is more enjoyable than the rest? Like, do you like, man, I really like to get up and knock on doors, or I really like the public speaking, or I just like it all, or yeah. all of it is, like, what, is, what, is, what does it feel like? I think anytime you can touch the people, talk to people, yeah. um, answer the question about why you're running, explain mm -hmm. that to the people, you know, that's, that's always a good day. What was the most, like, interesting question someone's ever asked you? Like, wait, I got a question. Uh, and they was just asking something totally left. I mean, I always get, ain't she too young to be a judge? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I get yeah. that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think we need younger judges. But when we were doing the Constitution, there are age minimums, right? To For, be a judge? I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What so is it? If you're old enough to be an attorney, uh, first, okay. first of all, I'm 35 years old, so I'm old enough you to be president, president okay, of the United okay. States. Yeah, so, yes, I'm old enough to be a judge. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I don't know why I thought judge was 45. Now you're the president, but that judge doesn't nah. wait 10 years. Wait yeah. 10 years. Okay. Uh, what would you say to the 16 year old you? Um, just in general or? Just in general, like just a, a jewel of wisdom. Let me just uh, be clear. Anytime I go out and I talk to kids, I like to tell them, yeah, I went to Whitney Young. It is the greatest high school on earth. One of them. Right? Mm. Right. Well, I'm <laughs> Okay, but <laughs> I was not the greatest student at Whitney Young. Mm -hmm. I tell folks that, hey, you know, my GPA was below a 2.0, and you know, it's never too late to turn it around. Turn, to turn it around. So, if you uh, want better for yourself, if you change your mind, your mind's uh, frame, state of mind, and you just work hard, mm -hmm. you could definitely get to where you're trying to go to. Well, that's a perfect segue, man. Everybody that comes onto this platform, we like to uh, play a game called This, That, and the Third. Okay. And the rules are simple. We're going to ask you three simple questions, and uh, all you have to do is answer honestly and from the heart. You ready to play? Yeah, let's do it. All right, we're going to let my co-hosts kick it off. Okay, so, you know, I went to high school with your adorable wife. <laughs> so tell me, how did you two meet? We met at NIU 
on the back of a the Husky Line bus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she had a Snickers and <laughs> I don't know what, I said something to her about the candy and I ended up getting the candy and the phone number. So. Oh. Gang, gang. He's Maybe winning. <laughs> candy, candy. <laughs> Stay like that. He said, we still together. There you go. All right, this is uh, that. So we met uh, while we were both uh, pursuing membership into the prestigious Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Right. Um, what, if any benefit, has the network of bros served in your uh, journey? Like, have brothers been very supportive? Are bros out here, judges and lawyers? I know they're lawyers, yeah. but ha how has that have benefited you at all, I if mean, any? First of all, I think the process, the process itself has been helpful. Very true. Like anytime stuff gets rough or tough, you give a flashback and you're like, I got this. I can make it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, bros have been great, man. Um, anytime I'm out and about and I'm meeting brothers, you know, they ask, how can I help? Yeah. That's the way it should be, right? Yeah. yeah. First fam, first yeah. fam. All right, this is the third. So last but not least, tell us something. Give us one random fact about yourself that no one knows. Mm. Hmm. I got to ask my wife for that one. Right. <laughs> what, what did we decide we were going to say on this? What are we going to say? Yeah. <laughs> Take it here. What's, what's <laughs> a random fact. Um, I don't know. He, he secretly left-handed. Nah. Uh, um, what's your guilty pleasure? Guilty yeah. pleasure. Uh, we both candy, watch uh, reality TV. So she uh, she kept giving me watching the Kardashian shows. Uh, oh, and, okay. Uh, of course, love and hip hop and all that stuff. Right. See, so, yeah, with that. Uh, so that's, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. So, right. he's young, he's likable, he's relatable. Go vote for Gino Betts, Go right? Vote. AKA, Your Honor. <laughs> right, yeah. So, uh, we thank you for tuning in and turning up with us, man. Before we get up out of here, we definitely gonna slow clap my brother and yours up out of here. Can we do that? Yeah. One time. And we appreciate y'all tuning in to this exclusive segment brought to you by This, That, and The Third. It's been a pleasure serving as your host. As always, it's your boy, Calvin Leroy King, The Third. My lovely co-host is with the most, Miss Reese PC, the one and only. And our special guest for this exclusive segment, none other than the Honorable Gino Betts. All right? So y'all stay tuned with us for the next episode, man. This is This, That, and The Third brought to you by Calvin and Reese, the undisputed king and queen of Chicago podcast. Check, Check us, us out. out.